Section Algebra 1 half, Lesson 78. Caleb, greetings. Um, here we go. This topic is opposites. I feel like you and I have already talked about this, but maybe I'm thinking of a different class. Forgive me if I repeat. Um, we know that there are these additional number lines, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the middle of the number line where zero is situated. And we know that to the right of that number, we go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc., etc. I don't need to fill it in. Going to the left, we have a different pattern. We're going into the negative numbers, right? Negative one, negative two, number, negative three. None of this is earth shaking. I'm pretty sure you've got it. What we can do, though, is we can talk about these two numbers that are equally distant from each other on the number line. 1 and negative 1 are a pair. 2 and negative 2 are a pair. 3 and negative 3 are a pair, and so on and so forth. And we call those pairs opposites. Okay? So we can say that um, the opposite of... 2 minus 2 to second. The opposite is second. Let me write it out. Okay? The opposite of 2 is negative 2. The opposite of negative 2, I'm not going to write this out every time because that will take us forever and you'll get bored and fall asleep. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Does that make sense? Okay, we're just saying flip back and forth. But what if we want to take the opposite of negative, negative 2? Okay, so it's negative 2, but then we want to take the negative of negative 2. That brings us back. Essentially what happens is we make those... ...positive 2. Okay, so what happens is that this is kind of confusing. I don't know if I like that explanation. That's what John talked about. Here's what you do. When we have long strings of minus signs in front of a number, say like that, and they're going to get even longer. For every two negatives, it's a positive. That's all you need to know. Every two negatives make a positive. And so when you have these long strings of numbers, you can just pair them off and see what you're left with in the end. What some people do is they just count them up. If you have an even number of minus signs, that means you have a positive number, right? Because every single negative has a pair, a partner. And if you have an odd number of negative signs, then you're going to end up with a negative number. Okay, so let's look at these problems in the book. Sorry I said all that stuff about the number line and the opposite. I think it's needlessly confusing. Okay, let's look at example 78.1. Look at all those minus signs and all the weird brackets. Take a minute just to go, oh, that's really ugly. But it doesn't make this hard. All we have to do is count the minus signs. One, two, three, four, five. There are five minus signs. Five is not numbers, so it's a negative seven. Okay, what about this next one? One, two, three, four. Aha! There are four, that's an even number, that means they all pair off to make positives, so our final answer is positive six. One more, okay, don't let this trip you up. Look, there's a minus, then a plus sign, and then minuses. Ignore any plus signs. They don't come into this calculation, so we just count the negatives. One, two, three, that's an odd number, so our answer is negative four. All right, and then that's all you're doing for the homework problems, the practice, you just count them up. There's one with a couple positives in there. Just ignore those, just count the negatives, and you will be fine, all right? So, lesson 78, done.